Hey, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to look at retouching this group photo. You can see the photo looked like this straight out of the camera and then we did some retouching. We had to open one of my brother's eyes as you can see in post-production uh, and we cleaned it up, added color, contrast, toning, all that good stuff in this tutorial. We're going to cover it all. I hope you stick around and watch it. So the whole process begins here in Adobe Bridge where I have two camera raw files. Now you can go over to my website, that's tutvid.com. There's a link down in the description of this video where you can go and download both of these files and follow along exactly. Or if you have your own images, you can follow along as well. I highly recommend raw files, but this tutorial is for people who have raw files and also just standard JPEGs. You can do everything we're doing with either raw or JPEG. Now, side note, if you have a camera that shoots raw files, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you shoot in raw. It opens up a ton of avenues in post-production retouching uh, for you. It's really, really good. Anyway, so we're gonna start here with this gosys.cr2. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. You do this with a JPEG as well. Just drag the file right into Photoshop to open it up. Well, did it open up? It's opening up. Now, if you have a JPEG image, the file is just going to open up in Photoshop. So really what we need to do here with this raw file is just bypass the camera raw editor altogether by hitting the open image button. All right, it's going to take a second to open up. This is a large 16-bit file. Now we want to get back to the camera raw editor so we can apply the changes that I want to apply in the environment that I want to apply them. That is with the camera raw editor. It's very much like Lightroom. I like it a lot. So what we're going to do in order to do that now here at this point, this could be a JPEG, this could be a camera raw photo, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point, um, except for the fact that a camera raw photo is a bigger, deeper file. Um, but we're not going to get into that. Over here in your layers panel, you're going to right click on your background layer and choose convert to smart object. When we convert to a smart object, which is going to take a second because this is a huge file, when we convert to the smart object, we're going to be able to come up here to filter and go camera raw filter, which is going to open that camera raw dialog box back up. We can hit the letter F to bring us to full screen. Now this is a slightly different camera raw dialog box than the one that we saw a minute ago. Um, but extraordinarily similar to just a few little changes but we don't need to worry about them the first thing we're going to do is come over here to temperature we can make our image really blue or really orange I don't want to do either one of those things I just want to reduce the temperature about negative 10 add a little bit of blue to the image and I also want to pull some green into the photo not that much green I want to just go about negative 25 so now that we've done some color changes to the image into the letter P to just show before and P to show after. That's sort of toggling preview, right? Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to kill off a ton of the contrast we see. So I'm actually going to start by increasing the exposure, bring it up to about point, I'll go point 0.70. That looks pretty good just before we're blowing out the highlights on all of our cheeks, right? Uh, and next what we're going to do, you'd think we want to reduce contrast. We just drag the contrast slider to negative 100. No, no, that's not what we want to do. We're going to use highlight shadows and whites blacks. By the way, this is me right here. I'm the dark haired one of all my brothers and sisters. We're going to reduce the highlights. We're going to reduce it to about negative 60. So right about like that. You can see it's really bringing the highlights way down. And then we're going to go ahead and increase the shadows right up to about 40 or so, 40-ish. We're going to reduce whites. Let's take those down to negative 60 as well. And we're going to boost the blacks Keep going up, 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 up to about positive 50. That looks good. All right. So once we've done that, we're going to turn over here to the curve tab. If you've never used curves before, it's probably set to the parametric curve. We don't want that. We want the point curve. The point curve is far more powerful. I like it a lot more. What we're going to do, we're going to grab the very bottom anchor point right down here. And we're going to drag it up, up to about, yeah, let's go right about there. So you can see that's really almost beginning to wash the photo out. It's really filling a ton of light into all the shadows um, and kind of making the image look really bad. Don't worry about it. We're going to recover it. We're going to, um, you know, kind of play around with this here in just a second and make it look really, really good. We're going to go back to the basic tab right up here. And now we're going to grab our contrast slider and we're going to bring it all the way up to 100%. You can see that it's really adding a lot of contrast. Um, but with the contrast is kind of coming a little bit of, well, I mean, not, not, it's not a little bit. There's a lot, a lot bit. <laughs> There's a lot of additional vibrance and saturation that I don't want. So let's just reduce the vibrance, knock it down here to about negative, 
I don't know, let's say about negative 30. Yeah, there we go, negative 30 looks good. And I'm gonna throw a little bit of clarity in here as well. Let's boost the clarity. I don't know, plus eight looks good. Something right around there. And uh, now that I see this, I wanna go ahead and play around with the split toning. That's how we got some of the cool color effects that we had before. So we're gonna drag hue up to about uh, 50 right there. It's kind of a nice yellowish orange or maybe right in between orange and yellow. And then we're going to boost the saturation to 20. So I take this up to 20. So basically what we're doing is we're pouring a little bit or maybe a little more than a little bit, but we're, we're, we're pouring a fair amount of orange into the highlights of the photo. And now we're going to take for our shadows, we want more of a pink magenta. Let's go to about 320 and we're going to drag the saturation for this up to about 30. So we're just infusing a bunch of magenta into the shadowy parts of the photo and a bit of orange into the highlights of the photo. In fact, I think there might be a little bit too much magenta in the shadows and not enough orange in the highlights. So let's adjust the balance. Just pull it here in favor of highlights, maybe around 20, uh, plus 20, I almost said 20%, about positive 20, that looks good. Um, now, as I'm looking at the photo, there's still a little bit uh, too much brightness uh, on the sides of our faces. So all of us, we've got a little bit too much white. Let's go back to tone curve. I'm gonna add a second point right around here and I'm just gonna pull down, down to right about there. It's kind of flattening out a certain range of tones uh, in the photo and giving this really like vintagey looking faded effect. I like it, it looks really neat. So I'm actually gonna leave that. It darkens it up just enough as well to take the edge off the highlights. Really cool. All right, now there is a bit too much red uh, in our faces now. So I'm gonna go over here to the HSL, it's Hue Saturation Luminance Sliders. I'm gonna go to Hue and I'm gonna begin by just shifting the red toward orange. So I drag it to the right. It's gonna sort of convert some of the reds over to orange. Um, maybe I'll go a little bit further than that. Yeah, something like that, right around 15. I'm at 14, that looks good. And then we're gonna go to saturation and I'm just gonna dump some of the saturation from the reds as well. So I'm gonna set that to about negative 20. It's just gonna take some of the redness out of all of our faces. So now that I've done that, I wanna save this whole kit and caboodle as a preset. I'm gonna go to the presets tab here and I'm gonna choose the new preset button. I'm gonna leave everything checked and I'm gonna name this underscore, 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 a bunch of underscores preset. The reason I'm throwing all those underscores on there is because as you see, when I hit okay, it's gonna stash it here at the top of my list of presets. I don't wanna go digging through all this junk looking for a preset. So I've got all these underscores and then preset. That way we can get to it quickly later. So now that we've done this, we can just hit okay and we'll apply the camera raw filter in Photoshop, voila. You can see it's a smart filter so we can shut it off anytime we want and we have the original image. We can double click on camera raw filter to open the camera raw editor back up. We can mask it. We can adjust the opacity of the effect. There's a ton that we can do because it's a smart filter uh, and that's really, really cool. And now that we're in Photoshop, we can go ahead and begin taking care of my brother Seth, whose eyes are closed. So the first thing we need to do is go back to our raw files and open this raw file in Photoshop. I'm gonna double click it. We're gonna do exactly what we did before. We'll bypass this image, open it. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because, well, I don't know, just for the sake of conformity. So we've got the photo open. We're gonna right click, convert to smart object. It's gonna take just a split second to convert to smart object. Then we're gonna come over here when it finishes loading to filter, camera raw filter. And this is gonna be quick and easy. We go to presets tab, select the preset, boom. Hit okay, back to Photoshop. It's gonna apply our filter, great. So now that we've got this, we need to drag this photo, this layer, this smart object into our go sys layer or Photoshop document. So I'm gonna choose window arrange and I'm gonna say two up vertically. So I see these side by side. I've got go sys over here, which I'm gonna zoom out to about 12.5% and I've got Seth face, which I'm also gonna set at 12.5%. I'm gonna grab my move tool. I'm here in the Seth face document. I'm gonna drag this over to here. I'm gonna hold down shift and drop it. And it's gonna drop it right perfectly in the middle of my document, just like that. We're done with the Seth face document. We can close it. Nope, we don't need to save it. All right, let's zoom in now. You can see I have two layers. Let's actually name them. I'm gonna name this one just like the file name Seth Face, and this one I will name Go Sis. So we're gonna go back to the Seth Face layer. We're gonna zoom in. You can see my sister looks weird. I look funky. My other sister's messing around. My brother's not even looking at the camera. This brother, I don't know what he's doing, uh, and he's got crazy eyes. So literally everyone is messed up in this photo except my brother Seth, so that works out great for us. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer to about 50%. That way I can see this photo and I can see the original one where his eyes are closed. See, back there his eyes are closed, kind of creepy. 
we're going to grab the move tool and we're just going to drag this layer since his eyes are closed what i'm going for really is just lining up either his mouth or his nose i can use my arrow keys to just nudge it right into place perfectly when i think i've got it i'll leave it there and i'll crank the opacity back to 100 percent now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go layer layer mask hide all or I can just hold down my alter option key and select the new layer mask icon. That gives me a layer mask filled with black. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer, well, maybe not. And I'm gonna grab the brush tool by hitting the letter B and I'm painting with the color black. I actually wanna paint with the color white, so I'm gonna hit that little arrow. I'm gonna increase my brush size by using my bracket key, the square bracket keys right next to the letter P. And I'm just gonna begin painting to paint his face right here into place. The light was all the same. It was all natural light. It was all just what it was. I didn't add anything and we didn't really move in between photos. Now you can see this really bad line showing up over here. This is the edge of my sister's hat. So I'm gonna again flip so I'm painting with black and I'm gonna paint away any weird lines that show up and just make sure that everything blends together nicely. Any kind of questionable areas, I'll just touch them up. And that looks about right. So we just moved his face with his open eyes right there onto the head. There it is before, there it is after. So looks pretty good. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer to begin retouching, getting rid of some blemishes. We've got this Frisbee or whatever laying down here in a leaf and something on the sidewalk, maybe something between my brother's legs. All of that stuff we wanna get rid of. We can zoom in on faces and get rid of pimples as well. So we're gonna create a new layer by hitting the new layer icon down here and we'll double click and name this layer blemishes. And what we'll do is we're gonna zoom in first and we're gonna work on this Frisbee and this leaf. This is actually pretty easy. It's fairly easy um, if you have grass to um, retouch it or cover stuff like this in the grass, especially something like this where the grass is slightly out of focus. We're gonna grab the healing brush tool, not the spot healing brush tool, but the regular healing brush tool and look up here to the toolbar and choose sample we're gonna make sure that current and below is selected. The reason we want current and below is because we want to apply these retouching changes on the blemishes layer and not directly on the layers beneath. Remember, part of what we're doing here is a total non-destructive edit. We're not actually destroying the pixels on any of these layers. So by having our blemish or adjustments on their own layer, we can always shut that layer off if we really mess something up. So we're gonna zoom back in. Whoop. I just messed it up. Let's zoom back in. Don't worry about that error. Uh, and I'm gonna hit the letter J, which is the hotkey for my healing brush and I'm going to hold down my alt or option key and when I hold down my alt or option key this allows me to sample uh, colors and texture so I'm going to sample this color over here and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to paint over that leaf great it heals that right up I'm going to select some grass from here I'm going to begin painting over the frisbee maybe a little bit more and you can see just like that, super easy. I mean, we just covered the Frisbee up, it took two seconds. There's this little piece of something on the sidewalk. It's just like you know, sampled off the sidewalk there. I've got this junk here on the grass behind my brother. I'm gonna sample this grass here and I'm just gonna paint right over that. And that looks pretty good. There's like a leaf or something back there that's slightly off uh, color. Now what I'll do is I will zoom in on brothers and sisters faces um, and I'll just retouch any little spots. So here, this brother, he's got, who knows what's going on with him. There's always something, whoop, that was my start menu. There's always something ridiculous going on with him. Uh, my sister, she's got a couple spots. It's the girls are usually particularly uh, picky about cleaning up facial anything. Uh, my general rule is anything that wouldn't be there in a couple weeks, I'll get rid of myself. Eh, I don't really care. That's good enough. Uh, my other sister, let's get, whoop, let's get rid of a couple little spots here. Uh, something like that. There's something over here. Like, woo, hello. There we are. We're not going to mess around with that too much. Uh, there we go. That looks good. And then we're back to my brother Seth. He's got a couple spots. Get rid of that stuff. There you can see we just fly through it pretty quickly. And my youngest brother here, he's still at that age where he's getting attacked by the acne, by the ac by the acne uh, brigade. There we go, that's good enough for him. And uh, then one of my other brothers, eh, he looks good. All right, so just like that, we've created our blemishes layer, we've gone, we've retouched the skin a little bit. We've gotten rid of some junk in the foreground that we didn't like. We could get rid of that bright orange sign if we wanted. Um, actually, here's how I would uh, get rid of that. I would actually just use a hue saturation adjustment layer, reduce the saturation quite a bit, or even shift the saturation so the orange is a little bit more red, desaturated a little bit. I'll desaturate it a bit, actually. 
and then fill the mask with black by selecting the mask and hitting Command or Control I. Then grab your brush tool again, and we want to hit the letter X. So we flip our foreground and background colors. So we're painting with white, and we're just going to paint over that, uh, just like so, just to really kind of, you know, only affect the sign. And now that we see that, we can increase the contrast a little bit, and just kind of make the sign so it doesn't stick out quite so much. It sort of blends in with the fence a little bit more now instead of being a bright orange spot back there. So that looks cool. In fact, I want to reduce the saturation even more. There we go, something like that. Now it's really not distracting. So just little adjustments like that we can go in and make. Uh, now once we have done that sort of blemish retouching, we're going to sharpen this. To sharpen it, I like to use the hotkey, Control shift alt that would be Command-Shift-Option on the Mac, E. That takes all of your visible layers, pops them up into a new layer. Next, image adjustments desaturate. This converts your image to a low quality, low contrast, black and white image. I just need to suck the color out of it. And I'm going to go filter, other, high pass. And I'm going to select right here on, I don't know, any of my brother's faces. And the radius of two pixels is a little bit too high. Let's reduce it. Let's go like 1.3. That looks good. Hit OK. And I'm going to set the blend mode to soft light. And there we go. We've added some sharpness uh, to the image as well. So there's before, there's after. It's very subtle, but subtle is good. Lots of subtleties make huge differences. Um, all right, so now that we've sharpened, we can just grab the crop tool, crop this image down to how we want it, and we will be done. So I have the crop tool here, and you can see that it is set to a one-to-one -one square. I don't like that. I want the original ratio of the photo. So original ratio, I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to pull this in, uh, something like that. And then I'll just pull this down a little bit. Whoops. I'm going to make sure we're at original ratio. I'm messing everything up here, but that's all right. We're learning together. All right, so I'm going to pull this back out. I almost would like to get rid of the garbage can a little bit. I can probably crop it right out, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. And there we go. I'll set the crop, and I'll hit the check icon to commit. And I will have cropped the image. It's just going to render all the smart filters and everything again, so don't worry, don't panic if it looks weird. And you can see just like that, we have retouched and toned and edited and adjusted the color and brightness and sharpness and everything of this group photo. That's how you do it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around and watching the tutorial. Go ahead and hit that like button and share the video. Two super duper helpful things. Thank you so much. Go check out the website, tutvid.com. Take it easy.